NASA is well known for its space travel and discovery. But the organization is also doing research here on Earth, beneath the surface. Among them is the peculiar new finding that has altered scientific perceptions of the world beneath the ice sheet of Antarctica. What has been found by NASA? Does it impact you too? Come see the intriguing new find that NASA has made beneath the ice of Antarctica. It makes sense that not everyone has Antarctica on their bucket list. With a land area of roughly 14 million square kilometers, or 5.4 million square miles, Antarctica is the fifth biggest continent. The continent's size does, however, change with the seasons, as the wintertime expansion of sea ice along the coast about doubles its area. In fact, fewer than 5% of the enormous wilderness in Antarctica is free of ice. Almost the whole continent is covered with ice. In an area slightly smaller than one, this location holds 90% of all the ice on Earth, five times larger than the United States. It's so cold here that boiling water thrown into the air will evaporate right away, because the majority of the particles will condense into steam, and the remainder will immediately solidify into tiny ice crystals. The regions that make up East and West Antarctica are the divisions of the continent. Two-thirds of the continent, or roughly the size of Australia, is made up of East Antarctica. The average thickness of the ice in this area of the continent is 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers, an extension of the Andes Mountains. West Antarctica is a chain of ice islands that stretches towards South America's southernmost point. The Transantarctic Mountains, which straddle the continent and are occasionally entirely covered in ice, divide the two areas. Does Antarctica have any plant life? Kind of. It is restricted to a few lichens, algae, and mosses. Over the past 50 years, Antarctica's seasonal moss cover has gradually expanded. Even yet, there are far more animals than people, with the exception of amphibians, reptiles, and terrestrial mammals. Along Antarctica's beaches and in its icy waters, vast populations of penguins, whales, fish, and crustaceans thrive, particularly during the summer. What about living for humans on this vast stretch of ice? Due to the severe weather, Antarctica is home to no indigenous inhabitants. Nevertheless, throughout the summer, up to 4,000 visiting scientists brave the cold by dispersing among 70 research stations. That figure falls to 1,000 in the colder winter months. Oceanographers, marine biologists, and climatologists mostly use Antarctica as a hub. But the frozen treat also draws astronomers from all across the world. This is due to the fact that Antarctica is among the best sites on Earth to watch space if you can withstand the cold. Its arid climate and lack of light pollution are to blame for this. In relation to space viewing, this includes NASA, the supreme authority on space travel. What has been the Antarctic mission of NASA? From above, the Antarctic ice sheet may appear like a serene, never-ending sheet of ice that has encased Antarctica for millions of years. However, it should come as no surprise that the ice sheet, where its base meets the bedrock of the continent, can conceal hundreds of meltwater lakes and reach depths of thousands of meters at its thickest. Now, using NASA's most sophisticated Earth-observing laser sensor ever launched into space, Conway and Mercer are two more of these functioning sublacial lakes that scientists have found because to advancements in their mapping of these hidden lake systems beneath the West Antarctic ice sheet. The new study adds freshwater that may change the Southern Ocean's circulation and habitats and it offers crucial knowledge for identifying new sublacial lakes from space and evaluating how this secret plumbing system affects the rate at which ice slips into the ocean. Scientists have been able to map the sublacial lakes precisely thanks to NASA's ICE, Cloud, and Land Elevation Satellite 2, or ICESAT-2. The ice surface is measured by the satellite, and in spite of its massive thickness, it rises and falls with the filling and emptying of lakes beneath the ice sheet. The study, which was published in Geophysical Research Letters, combines hike data from Cryosat-2, a satellite operated by the European Space Agency that monitors polar ice thickness and the original ICESAT mission. For many years, the hydrology systems beneath the Antarctic ice sheet have remained a mystery. That started to change in 2007 with a discovery made by University of California San Diego glaciologist Helen Amanda Fricker of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography that updated our understanding of Antarctic's sublacial lakes. Fricker discovered for the first time, using data from the first ICESAT in 2007, that beneath Antarctica's swiftly moving ice streams, there is a vast network of lakes that connect and actively fill and drain over time. 
It was formerly believed that these lakes would keep meltwater statically, without filling and emptying. The interconnected systems of lakes at the ice bed interface that are transporting water around were discovered by the initial ICESAT mission, which made it possible for scientists to examine all the effects on oceanography, glaciology, and microbiology. But thanks to ICESAT 2, researchers now had an extremely useful tool that produced data with such high precision that they could begin charting the surface limits of lakes. Researchers have postulated that subglacial water exchange occurs in Antarctica as a consequence of multiple processes, such as variations in the pressure caused by the enormous weight of the ice above, friction between the ice sheet's bed and the rocks below, and heat rising from the earth below, that is insulated by the ice's thickness. In sharp contrast, lakes at the base of the Greenland ice sheet overflow with meltwater that has seeped through surface fissures and holes. How far below the surface do the lakes Mercer and Conway lie? Beneath 1.2 to 2 are these hidden pearls of icy water. On the southernmost continent, there are 5 miles, or 2 to 4 kilometers, of ice. They repeatedly fill and empty in mainly enigmatic cycles that could affect the speed at which the ice sheet advances, as well as the route and location at which meltwater enters the southern ocean. This flow in turn has the ability to alter global ocean circulation patterns by influencing the southern ocean's currents. In contrast to the majority of surface lakes that stagnate with time, this subterranean water system is extremely dynamic. Scientists have been able to track changes in the subglacial lake system between 2003 and 2020 by merging data from several satellites. The boundary between the Mercer and Willens ice streams in West Antarctica, the Lower Mekayil ice stream in West Antarctica, and the Upper Academy Glacier in East Antarctica were the three regions they concentrated on since they had high satellite coverage and were known to have active lakes. The researchers named the two new lakes they discovered at the Mercer and Willens border the Lower Conway Subglacial Lake and the Lower Mercer Subglacial Lake. It was also discovered that there were actually two lakes beneath the Mikhail Ice Stream, rather than the previously believed one. These lakes underwent significant alteration throughout time. For instance, in the last 17 years, at least three periods of drainage have occurred in the lakes beneath the Mercer and Willens ice stream boundaries. All the lakes below the Mikhail ice stream, meantime, have drained and filled according to their own rhythms. During the study period, the lowest lake saw four fill drained events, which took approximately a year to finish each time. While the third lake only marginally drained between 2016 and 2017, the second lake drained between 2014 and 2015 and had been filling up again. According to Prisku, life on Mars beneath the frozen surface would resemble the patterns found in the subglacial lakes of Antarctica. Please share your thoughts in the comments area below regarding NASA's discovery of evidence of life on Mars.